hi, hello. My name's Lillian. Welcome or welcome back to the Knits by Lillian podcast. Thank you first and foremost so much for everyone who supported me on these last few videos. I feel like I say this every time, but I've had so much fun making them and I can't wait to keep showing you the content we have today. So hop into it, grab your beverage of choice, it is 70 degrees today in Michigan, so I've got an iced coffee going. And without further ado, let's hop into it. I am so, 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 so excited that the pattern for my latest design, the Arconia sweater, is finally ready for testing, thank God. I have been working on this pattern since, I think I actually showed a swatch of it in my first episode. So what is that, early December? It's been a while, but thanks to the greatest tech editor on earth, my pattern is ready. Graded for 10 sizes. I wrote it down so I don't get this wrong. 10 sizes. We have a 33.5 inch to 65.75 inch bust size range. So I'm gonna include all the information to apply to the test knit down below. There will be a Google Doc form you can fill out. Please fill this out rather than messaging me on Instagram or just leaving a comment on this video. Please feel free to do both of those things just generally. But as far as it goes for applications for test knitting, it's easier if I just have them all in one place. I'm sure other people have said this before, but that's what works best for me in the past. So we're gonna do that again. Oh. I just now realized that my cat's been in the back of this the whole time, so she's also a test knitter by weaving her little hairs into everything I own. But super excited about this. This is the worsted weight version of this sweater. The green yarn here is... Please hold. Brooklyn Tweed Shelter. I swear I've said the name of this yarn so many times at this point and I just, it leaves my brain. And the white is Blue Sky Fibers. We'll stop worsted. So I will include gauge, yardage, everything like that. We've got full length sleeves here, raglan construction, just a bit of positive ease. I think this has about maybe four to six inches of positive ease on me, but I'm so excited about this pattern. Okay, so coming in the future, but not right now, I'm working on a vest version of this design. So it's the same houndstooth pattern. However, when I did a vest for my, the name is leaving my mind. I just don't even know. Okay, when I did Imogen sweater, thank you. Can you tell that it's been a long week? Now it's Tuesday. Anyway, when I did the vest design for my Imogen sweater, it was very similarly constructed to the sweater itself. So that sweater was a drop shoulder. So this the sweater vest, I don't know what to call it. The sweater vest slipover version had the same sort of like cap sleeve situation that a drop shoulder sweater creates if you just don't attach the sleeves. That's what I was going for. I wanted it to be a little bit more oversized, boxy type feel. So that's what was happening with the last vest version. The houndstooth, I think because of the way this stitch pattern is, somebody's doing a wheelie right in front of my window. The youths are going wild these days. The sun is out, the sun is shining, the bonkers are bonkering. The houndstooth vest version is gonna be more tailored than the image and vest was. So I want to do a sort of set in sleeve shape, and then we'll just have ribbing, obviously no sleeve. Um, I'm still working on that, is the long and the short that I'm getting at. I want it to have a V-neck, I want it to have a deep V-neck. I have a vision of a sort of white colored shirt, my sample is black and white. I'll hold it up for you. We can take a look at the progress we've made or not made together. Um, she's a work in progress. So I've got, I've got a lot of stitches on hold here. Here's where we're at. So you can sort of see, this is gonna be one of the front panels. Here's stitches on hold for the second front panel. Here's the back panel, same faux seam on the side. So I'm really loving the stitch pattern in black and white. However, because of how tailored I want it to be, it's just taking me a little bit longer to figure out the numbers and to figure out the shaping. So. I might honestly hold off on this to test until after 
we do a test for the sweater version just to see if there's any fit issues, any shaping issues, any stitch pattern issues. Similarly, I also want to do a DK weight version of this pattern. So both of these yarns are worsted. It's two worsted yarns held together. So it means it's a very dense material. It doesn't drape a whole lot. That's kind of what I was going for here. Oh, I have a cat trying to get onto my lap. That's kind of what I was going for with this pattern. I didn't really want there to be too much drape. This cat's not friendly. <laughs> okay. That's what you get. You came onto my lap willingly. So there's not a lot of drape in this pattern because of the yarn weight. So that being said, I know there's a lot of people who live in warmer climates than I do that would like a DK weight version. So I'm sending numbers to my lovely tech editor to see if she can grade a DK weight version of this. But I think I'm gonna hold off on that until we get some testing done for this version, just because I want it to be the exact same pattern, just a different weight. I want the fit to be the same. I want the sizing to be the same. So if we work out any sizing issues, if we work out any fit issues, like I said before, issues with the stitch count, stitch pattern, everything like that, I think it's best to work that out in the first and then we'll add in these other versions later. So all of that being said, I know a lot of you have been really excited for this design and I just want to say thank you because when I create something, it makes me so happy to see that other people are interested in it, interested in the designs I'm making, interested in the fiber arts that we're producing together. So thank you so much for your support of this design. Um, apply to test it below and let's rock and roll on this baby. Okay, so that's all I have to say about that. I'm super excited about it. It looks like the stitch pattern is showing up really well on camera, so I'm super excited about that too. Okay, so we've had a little outfit change here because I don't know if any of you folks live in the Midwest, but it is 70 degrees today. It's February. That is, that's wild. I mean, I'm not mad about it because I'm kind of a warm weather girly, but I'm concerned for the earth. Is she okay? So I've just put on a sweater instead. Cut to me two seconds ago saying that that sweater is very warm. The Arconia pullover I was just wearing doesn't have much drape, wool, not really what I want to be wearing while I'm gesturing wildly. Okay, this is the Match Cardigan by Kadri. Super oversized. I did this as a test knit last fall. Very classic. This is, I'm not gonna remember the yarns I used, but I will list them below. I know it's drops air, and then I think a worsted held together. It's pretty thick, but it also is pretty airy. Okay, so enough about that. Things that I have finished recently, we're gonna go on a journey here because one of the things that we started, we've definitely discussed before. So this is the Sherry cardigan. It might be Cherry, I'm not sure. There are pictures of this up on my Instagram if you would like to take a better look. There's lovely, lovely lace detailing along the back of here. And then the same pattern goes down the sleeves. So this is two yarns held together. They're both Pearl Soho. The mohair is the Pearl Soho Tussock. It's their silk mohair. And then it's held with the linen quill. And it's really, I don't know how to show drape in fabric, but it's really drapey. It's very, yeah, look at that. I mean, it, lovely. The color is lovely. This was a test knit that I just finished for Joanna. I will link her stuff below. She's a really interesting pattern designer, has some really pretty designs over on Ravelry. Super fun test. It was actually the first time I did a test knit on Ravelry. So it was really fun to learn a little bit more about that platform. I'm just trying to get a good angle of this lace panel, but I think it's so pretty. I feel like I usually tend toward sort of boxier, more oversized grandfather type knits rather than a more elegant fitted cardigan. So I really like knitting things like this. I'll have to try it on and insert a clip because it fits really well. And it's got a broken rib here that I think is really pretty too. Super fun to knit. Worked up um, kind of quickly for lace because the lace paneling isn't across the whole body. So you kind of increase in the broken rib section and the lace panel stays stagnant. But I thought it was really beautiful. So I would recommend this pattern. I don't think it's released yet, but if it isn't, it will be shortly. So lovely pattern to look forward to. Great spring knit too. I'm excited to wear that in the upcoming months. 
All right, so I don't actually have as many whips as I thought I did, which is shocking for me. And it means it's clearly time to go cast on more projects after this episode. But my last major whip that we have to discuss here today, this is the Clint Classic by Ann Vensel. It is a pattern that I've had my eyes on since it came out in, I think, 2022, pretty recently. It's a raglan in broken rib, two by two broken rib. And I've had this red yarn in stash for ages, and I've never been able to figure out a pattern that I've wanted to do with it. I've cast on so many things, but I finally found the right one, and I love how this is looking. So I've got the sleeves done. I am, as always, playing yarn chicken. So whenever I do a top-down sweater, which is most of the ones I knit, I tend to start the body, do my increases, the yoke, whatever, go back and do my collar and then I usually do the sleeves next weigh in are you a sleeve first girly or a body first girly tell me what you think but when I'm playing yarn chicken I usually do the sleeves first and then I knit the body until however long I run out of yarn and then that's where I call it quits but I am loving this pattern so it's a pretty big sleeve, not much decrease, but I kind of love a sort of balloon sleeve shape. It hasn't been blocked, so the ribbing looks a little bit sloppy, but it's been very cathartic to knit. Because in the round, you do your broken rib sort of every other row. So it's not that taxing. It's a great TV knit. I've been reading Throne of Glass, as you may have seen, if you follow me on Instagram. And I'm on the last book, which is a cool thousand pages. So I've been reading it for most of the sleeves and now into the body because I figured out once you get through the increases and everything, it's a pretty good smooth rhythm to do the broken rib without looking. And boy oh boy is Sarah J Mass putting me through the ringer with these books. So if you've read them, comment down below. Don't spoil it for me. But let me know if you read it and if you knit while reading it. But I'm loving how this is turning out. Of course, now I'm finishing a heavy wintry looking sweater as it's 70 degrees in February. So hopefully it cools down a little bit so I can wear this once I get it done and blocked. But I'm really excited about this. I really enjoy the raglan shaping she did. It goes pretty far, I'd say. So there's gonna be some positive ease through the shoulders. This is also, I'm not sure what the measurement of the size is, but I think it's a medium. So like the third size, extra small, small medium. I think it's the third size in the pattern. It's one size bigger than I normally would wear, I think, if I remember correctly. So it's also going to be big on me, which is what I wanted. I thought with that long raglan yoke, it would look good oversized, but now it's going to be so warm and here I am making oversized full length sweaters. So wish me luck, but I'm really excited about this. I started this one pretty recently. I don't think this was mentioned in the last podcast episode either. And as a person who designs a lot of their own patterns, even more than I really, really release, and slash also does a lot of test knits, I feel like I'm knitting a lot of things with patterns that either need edits, including my own, or I'm looking for edits for someone else for testing, or I have a deadline, or I have a deadline that I set for myself, and it's very rare that I sit down and cast on a pattern that is complete, perfect, and I can just rock and roll with it. So this has been really nice. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more of it, and I kinda wanna do some more patterns in general that are just styles that I haven't done much of. This is not a great example of that because I've knit a million and one raglans, but I really like Ann Vensel's designs. I think she has some really classic pieces. I kind of, her sample of this is in white, and I kind of want to do one in white. Did I say what yarn this is? I don't think so. This is Pearl Soho Good Wool and the Barocco Silk Mohair held together. And I think it's a really good combo. What do we think? I think this stitch definition is still really nice for having a mohair in there. I haven't worn it yet and I haven't worked with Barocco Silk Mohair before, so I'll let you know what my itch rating is, but so far, I think so good. Yeah, we love, we love. All right, so as I talk about oversized grandfatherly knits, I don't think I had even swatched this last episode. We have a striped 
drop shoulder, vintage cuff details. This is a pattern by me, drop shoulder, because I love a drop shoulder, can we tell? This is the same yarn I used for my loom pullover by Sorry Norland. Um, I made it as a gift for my mom over Christmas a couple episodes ago. Brown body, white detailing, and I really liked the yarn. This is a very Pearl Soho heavy episode, but Pearl Soho yonder. This is the brown is the color ginger brown. And then the white is just a white wool I had in stash. The Pearl Soho yonder is 50% wool, 50% alpaca, so it also drapes really well. I don't know if you can tell, but I was going on a trip to visit some friends in Milwaukee and I just wanted a sweater to wear, so I drafted this up. I had no plans of making a pattern or anything like that. However, after I posted it on my Instagram, unfinished, may I add, a couple people reached out to me because I put a little poll and said, I didn't, I wasn't sure if I liked the collar or the cuff details, but let me see if I can get it to focus. I did a surprisingly stretchy bind off. I think that's what it's called. So I knitted a row and then did the bind off both in the contrast color to kind of give it that little pop of detail. And a lot of people asked me about it. So let me know if you're interested in seeing a pattern for this in the future. I think it would be really fun as a t-shirt version too. For the summer, I could see like blue and white kind of coastal grandmother sailor vibes. So let me know if this is a pattern you'd like to see in the future, because we can definitely make that happen. I don't have a name for her. I've worn her several times, but I really like it. I think it turned out really nicely. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Not me holding up my own design and my own pattern and going, I think I like it after I've worn it multiple times, but I'm really excited about this one. So let me know. I don't know, are there too many drop shoulder patterns? What makes a pattern original? I feel like I struggle with this as a small designer because I see a lot of bigger designers releasing patterns that are I don't want to use the word basic, but maybe like closet staple-esque. And then a lot of smaller designers releasing these patterns that I think are super new and interesting and fun stitch patterns and a little bit more out there, but they aren't getting enough attention because they're just people with smaller platforms. So as a person with a smaller platform, I don't know, am I just adding to the noise by making more basic patterns? Are closet staples something we want more of? Is this a fun and interesting design because it has little details? Let me know what you think. I'm sure the knitwear community has a lot to say about that, but I really like this pattern. I really, really like this yarn. So I think I will definitely be using more of this in the future. All right, I think that is all that I've got for us today. I will keep everyone posted on my test call. Everything will be posted in the description, um, yardage, sizing, application to test knit. I don't have a set in stone deadline yet because I want to be able to leave the testing document open for a little while just to make sure that people see this or see my Instagram posts about it so that we have time to apply. I plan on doing at least a 10 week test knit. So if you're someone that usually has a hard time finishing test knits, I do not mean this in a knit shaming way. Okay. Firstly, sorry, here I am trying to film an outro and I'm getting on a soapbox. I think there are a lot of designers that don't give people enough time to test knit. So I never want to be that person. I usually tell people if you have too much life going on at the moment to try and get it done in a 10 or 12 week period maybe don't apply however if you think i got this i've got a couple projects going on already but i have space on my needles for one more and then during the testing period something comes up it's okay it's just a sweater it's not life or death obviously i would love as many people as possible to be able to finish the deadline but it's knitting, it's not that serious. As a person who works in healthcare, I get it. Sometimes I have weeks where everything just falls apart and it's so out of your control. And sometimes you still have time, but you don't have the mental space. I get it. People get sick, things happen. I always feel bad when people apologize to me for not being able to finish a deadline. It's life, it's okay, it's just a sweater. So that being said, if you're worried about making a testing deadline, message me, let me know. We can always work something out. So if you have questions, let me know, reach out. It's a friendly space. We're just here because we love yarn and we love sweaters and we love wearing them. So 
Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Here I was going, ooh, it's gonna be a short video, and now I'm talking about all these other things. But long story short, everything will be in the description box, information, testing information, sizing. Let me know if you have patterns you wanna see from me in the future. Let me know if you would like to see other types of videos. I keep saying I'm gonna film things other than a podcast, and here we are with yet another podcast. But I have ideas, I promise. <laughs> we will be seeing them shortly. Thank you so much. If you've stayed through to the end, you're a real one. And everyone, enjoy their week.